welcome to July 2023 Quilt Bible Live with Lisa and Rona and these three lovely ladies to talk everything A to Z about long arming. Woo woo! Can I get a woo woo? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, woo -woo. Michelle. You was a little delayed, Nancy and Jane. <laughs> No <laughs> brownie points. <laughs> I know Rona um, is over sharing to her social media. Um, everybody out there watching, we're going to give Nancy, Jane, and Michelle a couple minutes to share over onto their social media. So why they're doing that, of course, Lisa Babbles. Um, tonight is about long arming A to Z. We're going to talk about anything and everything long arming. Of course, we have a plan, but if you guys have been with us month to month, you know, sometimes we kind of vary off the plan a little bit and that's okay. If you have questions, put them down in the comments and Steve, Rona, Jane, Nancy, or Michelle, somebody will hopefully see your question and we will grab those as soon as possible. Now, do not freak out if you put a question and we don't answer it right away because believe it or not, we do have this segmented for different sections. So we will try to throw your question in when it is most appropriate. So stick with us. You know that we are always live 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we have a full hour of quilt babble. Rona, take it away. Yay. Okay, so um, this time we are talking, like Lisa said, all about long arming. And um, some of you may have used long armors before. Some of you may be interested but have not made that jump to long arming, using a long armor yet. So we want to answer as many questions as possible and give you guys some really good information all about long arming. So we have invited three fantastic long armors that are here with us tonight, Michelle, Nancy, and Jane. So I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about your business and what got you started long arming. And let's start with Michelle. Hey, hi. I'm Michelle Holt. I run My Quilting Beehive in uh, Sandy Hook, Virginia, which is a little bit west of Richmond. I have been doing this since 2015. Wow. Uh, when I started, I was in Connecticut and I started by accident. I had no intention of starting a long arm business, but I worked at a quilt shop part time when my kids were little during school hours and the shop was closing. And in the shop, I got to use this long arm right here at night. He'd let me go in at night to use it by myself. And um, when they went out of business, I was going to lose my baby. And I said, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> and my husband actually said, well, just buy it and take it home and start a business. And I said, oh, OK. And I did. So here I am. Oh, that's a keeper. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? He's great. Great story. Um, What's your long armor's name? What? What? Did you name her? Uh, no, I didn't lame her. This is, it's a crown jewel. It's a baby lock. It's just, it's my so machine. It's I, I never gave her a name. I know a it's lot of people jewel. do. I never did. There you go. Um, She's Jewel. We just named her for jewel. you. There you go, <laughs> Jewel. She's great. Um, so I've been doing this since 2015. I moved to Virginia in 2019. Um, up there, I had a lot of customers came with me. Luckily, we can do everything by mail and having COVID just made everybody want to mail everything anyway. So I've been doing a great mail business. Uh, and since COVID ended, it took me a little time, but I'm really starting to get a lot more people here in Virginia that are local. And um, it's been a great business. I write patterns, I make custom quilts, I, I do a little bit of everything. Um, and I just, I just, it's great. What's Very your cool. website? How can people find you? My website is myquiltingbeehive.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, My Quilting Beehive. And I also started a YouTube channel in 2021. I was doing a mystery quilt, the Colchester Mill Marvelous Mysteries. Colchester Mill is a quilt shop in Connecticut. And I'm doing a mystery quilt with a group from up there and people from all over. We have people all over the country doing it. Over 200 people are in that group. And I do YouTube videos on what they need to do each month to keep the mystery quilt going. So I started a tutorial channel. Love it. Uh, Very love cool. It. All kinds of stuff. Okay, Miss Jane, tell us all about your business and, and how you got started. Okay, so I started my business back in 2013, I think it was. Um, I had a sit down long arm and I was doing that. Um, I was a phlebotomist. And if you don't know what that is, I drew blood. And yeah, and so I wasn't happy with the schedules I was getting. So um, 
I took a class at a local quilt shop that asked, uh, that was talked about starting your own long arming business. So I thought, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. So I got rid of my one machine, my sit down machine, and I got a handy quilter Avante um, and I went to town and I specialize. Now I have a handy quilter Amara though, but I, um, I specialize in free motion custom quilting. That seems to be, um, where I thrive the most. I also can do computerized edge to edge. Um, I do also, because I love to teach, I've been teaching um, in the quilt world since about 2015 at shows and at guilds and things. So um, I've developed quite a few products to help free motion quilters learn free motion custom quilting. And um, I also have a YouTube channel and that is pretty much dedicated to free motion quilting. And I have um, my website and my Facebook and Instagram are all pretty much under uh, my, my website is Stitch by Stitch Custom Quilting. And my um, Facebook and Instagram are under Jane Stitch by Stitch. Wow. So we are, um, uh, just so everybody knows, we have Steve is putting our, our man behind the curtain, our Mr. Oz, is uh, he's putting links in the comments for you guys. If you're watching and you're interested in any of our guests tonight, you can go visit them. Please do follow them on Facebook, YouTube. Um, I, I, it's funny that you said that because my, uh, my sister-in-law, she was also a phlebotomist and so she was our, our resident <laughs> vampire. That's why. <what, laughs> that's funny. Well, so, I, I tell people, I tell people I, I traded one needle for another needle. So I you know. love it. <laughs> but I like my I like this needle much better. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so and, we should I don't know about the best for last, but she is definitely one of our favorites on Bab Quilt Babble. She's I don't know, Nancy, is this your third time with us? I think oh, you're me, yes. <laughs> you, you, third time, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Because you're just a, a, a woman of, of all trades. Um, so yeah, okay. So tell us this time about your long arming business. Well, I started long arm quilting over 25 years ago when it was not popular, when we had to fight to be accepted into the world of quilting, because oh, heaven forbid yeah. if you used a ginormous machine to finish your quilt. <laughs> so so anyway, I started out, um, like I said, 25 years ago, actually it was, I think it was longer than that, because I could not handle putting the quilt, you know, through the machine. I wanted to do it in my in my eyes, the easiest way. So I, I talked my husband into it. So I'm on my third long arm now. Wow. I started out with a small one, then I moved up to another brand, and now I'm with an Innova. Um, I was a rep for Innova for a while, and uh, I went into the other side of the world of quilting as in pattern designer, and so I had to stop being a rep, but I was able to develop a line of rulers for free motion quilting, because if you can see the quilts behind me, you probably can't really tell what they are, um, <laughs> but they're kind of cool. <laughs> just, just say it. <laughs> just say it. Yeah. So I was the first um, long arm quilter on the PBS, PBS TV show Quilting Arts. Uh, they invited me, and um, it was an interesting thing because they really had no idea what a long arm quilter did. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so. Um, kind of like a funny side story. Uh, the host, Susan Brubaker Knapp, I believe that's her name. I hope I said that right. She was supposed to ask me some questions and we had reviewed the questions. And then when it came time for the camera to go on, they switched around and they asked me different questions. And I had to like really think on my feet. Like um, one of them was, how does the needle, how does the needle in the bobbin, how do you get your tension right and all this kind of stuff. and being on camera, man, I had to like think on my feet and I'm not good at that. <laughs> As you could probably tell a little while ago, I was forgetting words. But anyway, so I started out with free motion and then I went into the custom and that's how I got recognized and got on the TV show was doing the custom work. And I taught for AQS as a long arm quilter. And then I've got little notes over here. That's what I'm looking at. Well, so, 25 years is hard to remember. I'd have to have notes yeah, too, Nancy. <laughs> it is. It really is. And I'm thinking, where did I live when I first start? Because I've moved so much. <laughs> so that brings me to, I live in Michigan, just north of Detroit, south of Flint, in this teeny tiny little town called Goodrich. We have two stoplights, by the way. Um, <laughs> 
so I said earlier, I have a line of um, rulers because I used to love doing ruler work and they're on my website. Matter of fact, I loaded them today. So it's about time I got them on my website. And my website is nancymcnallyquilts.com. Trying to think what else. Um, now all I do is edge to edge. <laughs> so I went from one extreme to the next. So I like the fact that I can put it on the long arm and I can go do something else and be still be right there by the long arm. Listen, get the quilt done, take it off, get the next one on. So I do yeah. not have a big waiting list because I have deadlines with publishing companies to get my quilt designs done. So, so absolutely I have a big wait list. So so that's a great segue into our first part of tonight's true QA. But these ladies have been dropping terms because no matter what profession you are in, you got your own lingo. And if you're watching this and you're new to quilting, some of these terms that they have been using, you might be like, what? Like edge to edge, like, what does that mean? I'm on the edge of jumping off a cliff. What does it mean? We're gonna talk about edge to edge tonight. You've heard them talk custom, ruler work. We may um, end up talking about Trapunto. That's a whole different ball game. Computerized, laser, free motion, a lot of these terms. So we're gonna start with the basics. And um, Michelle, tell everybody when someone is talking about a panto, what does panto mean? What is a panto? So pan panto and edge to edge go together. And as, as a computerized long armor, I don't call it a panto, but people used to call it a panto when it was a paper and they would trace, they'd stand behind their machine and trace the paper across the machine and trace the design. Which I um, still have, I so let's not make fun of that. <laughs> sorry, people still do. But when, once you get that computer up there, you never go behind your machine again. Um, so you work from the front. And a panto or an edge to edge, it's just a design. It's the repeated design that starts at one end of your machine, works all the way across to the other edge. From quilt edge to quilt edge, you can even go a little bit over the quilt um, beyond it. Um, some people do edge to edge in the middle with a separate border design. So you could cut your edge to edge and just do it in the center of your quilt. That works as well. But it's just a repeated design that just goes nicely and smoothly across your quilt um, to make it repeat over and over. Absolutely. And um, Nancy, I'm going to go to you for this because I'm going to save Jane for a couple other questions. So when people are talking an edge to edge design or a panto, we, you know, people always want to know cost and something that I try to explain in the shop, we do not long arm in the shop at so indivitous, but we have ladies that come and pick them up. There's a difference for density of the quilt, uh, panto, correct? So talk about yeah. that, um, how that can affect, because I know some people will be like, well, I had a queen size done and it was this cost, but now I had another queen size, the same thing, but it costed more. So talk about the density of an edge to edge and why that would change cost. Well, if you're doing computerized, you can change the height and the width of the the edge to edge design. And so if you make it smaller, it's going to take longer to go across. And well, it might be the same design. It may not take longer to go across, but it's going to take more times to go all the way down to finish the quilt. And so time is always a factor. And so then there's the other side of it. Well, you pick this design that had lots of open space and then the next design you chose is just filled with all kinds of you know swirls or feathers or whatever it happens to be and that fills it to the point where it takes the machine or the person the human longer to get from one side of the quilt to the other side and so time is money and that's the best way to explain it so and if you go with a heavier um denser quilting design um yeah, I lost my train of thought. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I add to <laughs> Somebody finish my thought. You mean can I add to it? her thought? You yeah. can, Michelle. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So if you have a really dense design and the bobbins on a long arm are bigger than your bobbins on a standard machine, but a really dense design, the bobbin will run out and it won't make it all the way across the quilt. So you'll have to change it, tie a knot, hide the knot. So it takes another mm -hmm. extra extra thread and extra time to change your bobbin in between if especially i've done some dense ones that took two bobbins to get across one little repeat 
Um, if wow. it's super dense like that, you need a lot of thread and yeah. more time to change and tie knots and hide knots. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a, a big part of it too. And uh, it so makes the quilt, um, um, I want to say heavier, but what word? Am, why can I think? I a little know, stiffer. I, yeah, it is. I think it makes stiffer. a little stiffer. Yeah, the cool doesn't yeah. straight nicely if the the if the design is very dense. So right. it doesn't drape. Right. It's stiff. I find yeah. most of the ladies are questioning, you know, because it is a cost factor. You know, why did this twin cost this versus a same size? You know, there and I, you know, it is about using more thread for a denser um, design than others. Jane, when someone is getting an edge to edge or custom, uh, can that uh, be done with a quilt that has applique on it or embellishments? And if the answer is yes, do you want the embellishments before or after you start doing a custom quilt? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> it is a loaded question and that's why it's on the list. Okay, so <laughs> edge to edge, if they're, yes, you can do edge to edge over applique. Um, if it's a 3D applique where there's a lot of layers or maybe a wool applique, I wouldn't suggest an edge to edge because it's going to be difficult to go over all that. If it's embellished, there's no way I'm doing an edge to edge over top of that. I'm right. going to, it's going to have to be custom quilted. Um, um, I would, if, if I, I'm doing one right now, it's an applique quilt and I noticed on some of them there are some small embellishments with some little jewels or whatever on there some beading so that's fine because i'm doing custom on it but i would never take the chance of running an edge to edge and my needle hitting that and setting my machine out of the time yeah, yeah. exactly so. um who would like to answer the question is there a cost difference in edge to edge versus custom quilting who wants to answer that for us well, I can tell sure. you, I charge a lot. All I'm going. On. They ask me because <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> there, there's definitely a cost difference, and that's why I do mostly edge to edge because people don't want to pay the amount you'd have to pay to get it custom done. It takes a lot more time, and it's more direct time. You have to be right there. You can't step aside and do something else while it's running. So it takes a lot more time, a lot more patience, a lot more work. Um, yeah. So there's definitely yeah. a cost difference. Uh, real quick, we did have uh, a question about the embellishments and what embellishments are um, for somebody maybe that's a traditional piecer that hasn't gotten into the more artistic side of the quilting. Um, embellishments are um, like things that you would add to the top of your quilt, like sequins or jewels or things like that that buttons. are above uh, and above yeah. buttons, <laughs> buttons or even right? ribbons. Uh, I've seen zippers, the little fidget quilts. Oh, yeah. that, that's a prime mm -hmm. example. Um, yeah, those are the embellishments that we're talking about. Anything that is above and beyond your standard um, fabric and piecing. That, that great little quarter inch flange that people like. Oh, to yeah. Put in oh, there. Yeah. You can't quilt the over the piping. quarter inch flange. Yeah, 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 yeah. The piping. I feel like piping. Michelle yeah. says that with a little bit of angst. I'm just saying, well, Michelle. You know, so many people want to just quilt over it, and I always hate to quilt over it on them because the whole point of putting it there is so it will pop up a little. Exactly. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Jane, um, so since we're talking that, yes, it costs us more for um, custom versus edge to edge. Is there a turnaround expectation that would be different for someone that wants a edge to edge versus custom? And if so, why would there be a longer turnaround time or shorter? Well, for an edge to edge, if I can get it on my frame, I can get it off my frame that usually that same day, you know, um, for custom, I'm standing at the frame with a ruler and changing out thread colors and manually driving the machine and creating designs and that all takes time so um for me i generally only commit to um two custom quilts a month depending on the size that they are um because i know i can get that done um, and then i throw some edge to edge on in between but yeah custom takes a lot longer than what i mean it's it's hours and hours on the machine because a lot of times like right now i have an applique quilt on there i have to do i'm doing all the ditch work first which ditch work is stitching in the ditch around all the applique and all the blocks and securing everything down and then i'll go back and do all the fill work after the fact 
Um, so that all takes time doing ditch work. If you've ever done stitch in the ditch, it's not, it's not a quick and easy thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. around applique, that does take longer. Right. And whether you're it on does. a long arm or a sit down machine is either way, it's, that takes a while. It's very it tedious. And very another tedious. thing when you're doing custom work is if you think about the, our sewing space that you have on the long arm machine, like I'm, I'm holding my hands out like you guys can see it, but like I have a, <laughs> sorry, I have a 26 inch sewing throat, but you can't use that entire 26 inches no. for custom because you can't reach back that far. So all the work has to be like right here in your, in the zone that you can see. Good and then it, I give an example of, okay, you want me to do this custom work, but let me give you an example of what it's like. It's like standing at the kitchen sink doing dishes for eight hours straight. Yeah. And it's because you don't stand up straight. You have to okay. lean into the work so you can see. And so it's very hard on your body, your hips, your back, you know, and then holding the rulers down. Because um, Jane, you said you, excuse me, Jane, you said you you do ruler work too. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And holding the ruler, if you don't hold it the right way, it can hurt your hands. Michelle, do you do that too? custom work sometimes? Don't do ruler work now. Don't do ruler work? Okay. Because it, it will hurt your hands. Um, and so like I have really, I have severe osteo now in my hands. So it's difficult to to do the custom work. It just, it wears on your body. So that's and, another reason why I say like, yeah, no, uh-uh. <laughs> and, and something else to take into consideration too, is when somebody brings, say me a custom quilt, do you want my standard custom quilting or do you want it quilted for a show like okay let's let's yeah. go right there because now we're crossing over from the basics okay. that is good that okay. is a good um avenue you got two where we're going. There, Jane. <laughs> yeah no that, that is awesome so um guys now that we've kind of talked about the basics with our expert panel um there's things that you have to consider when you're thinking about your your quilt in general there's prep work that you need to do depending on whether you're quilting it yourself on your domestic machine or if you are sending it to the long arm and the more you know about what the long armors do the better results you will get because there's prep work you can do prior to get um, your quilts ready for them. So that's mm -hmm. the next section of questions that we are going to ask our panel. And um, they just have tons of information. And uh, well, like I said, once you've answered about or asked yourself a bunch of questions and you've decided, yes, I want to send it to the long armor, you do have to think, when do I want this quilt completed? Now, if you're like Lisa Renee, I wanted it completed five days ago because I'm always behind the gun and it's two days before Christmas. I may not get a long armor that's going to be doing that on the 22nd or 23rd of December. <laughs> so these are things that you have to think about. Um, so Rhonda, would you like to ask the first question to our ladies under the prep section um, in regards to getting ready? You're going to make me pull out my notes. Okay. So prep <laughs> section. Well, okay. First, this, I don't know whether this is on the notes or not, but somebody in the chat asked about um, basting. So I think this might be a good uh, <clears throat> question as far as when someone, um, like, let's say, Michelle, I'm going to send you a quilt to be quilted um, on the long arm. Um, what all am I sending you? And do I need to do any basting? No, no, don't answer Definitely this yet. Definitely no basting. We're out of sync. <laughs> Stop the madness. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was in the comments, so I'm answering her question. It's it coming. Is. It's coming. I'm, I'm yeah, going to reel it back. I'm going to reel it back. I'm going to reel it back. <laughs> um, so let's go here. I'm, I'm going to mix my that. When someone is wanting to send a quilt, my question is, I already know the, the answer, but I'm assuming, and you all can spill in here, you have basically a consultation with the person you're getting the quilt. Is that? Uh, yes. When I get them by mail, they can sometimes just fill out a form. They don't have oh, to talk yeah, to me true. first. Yeah. But. And, and that's still consulting because you've got your form yeah. created of different questions right. that you need to know, right? That's true. So, if a client is bringing in a quilt to a long armor, um, I'm assuming there is special instructions that they need to know in regards to prepping the back. Let's start there. Anybody want to dig in on your preferences or 
dislikes of backs in regards to seams or the direction or? Well, well most importantly, it needs to be bigger than the quilt top. Yeah, for the <laughs> quilt bigger. To, to fit on the frame. We need a little extra space to, to okay, attach it so to both ends and the sides. I have a question here then too, because there's some controversy over how much bigger. Like I've seen some people say at least four inches on each side. I've seen yeah, people say up to 12 inches on each side. Oh, what do you that's think too much. is a I know why. Do you think I know why. So four. Like four inches. So I know why four, they need four extra inches. inches the, the big the 10 to 12 inches because if they're using a particular product that they are attaching the quilt backing to their leaders um i don't know if i'm allowed to say the product i mean i have them um it's called quilt snappers red snappers that's what it's called red, red snappers. snappers you when you're doing ruler work and you have your ruler plate on the machine that um that system at of attaching the quilt backing to the the leaders takes up more room if you will and that's why they want more space more wide backing and also there's an i've seen someone's got a new ruler plate out so it's a little bit bigger than the average ruler plate and because we have to have a ruler plate if you're doing ruler work so that's why some people are asking for wider backs because you've got clamps on the side to hold the quilt, you know, to hold it taut. And then you've got the ruler plate, which extends past the base of the machine. So if it hits your clamps that hold the quilt steady, then um, it causes the machine to, well, number one, it's gonna make a noise. Number two, it's not gonna go the way you want it to go because it's gonna bump that clamp and it's gonna mess up the design and you might have to rip stitches and we, all don't we like do. doing that so no. that's one of the reasons why we hate ripping stitches but that's one of the reasons why they're asking for wider wider backs but that's 12 inches that's that's honestly that's to me that's too much but 10 inches would do it if you're using the uh, red snappers on uh, and, and doing ruler work otherwise it's four inches on each side okay yeah and i think you made a good point whether it's custom or edge to edge because Michelle's like, give me four inches on each side and I'm rocking and rolling. And mm -hmm. then Nancy and Jane, when y'all are talking custom, I definitely see why you might need a little extra because if you are doing some ruler work and you've got that. Yeah, I'm generally good with four inches all the way, you know, on each side, um, top and bottom. If I can get a little more out of it, that would be great, but I can make it work generally. So, um, yeah, because I've gotten quilts that have had a lot less and I've made it work. So <laughs> is, is it important that they square up their backing fabric? Anybody oh, yes. want to talk about that? Oh goodness. It's yes. Super helpful. <laughs> Why is it helpful, Jane? <laughs> so that it loads, because if you think about it, our the backing is placed along the bar and where the leaders. And you want it to be square so that when you roll that fabric, everything rolls nice and straight, and then it keeps everything from skewing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it really it helps. Prevents a lot. those puckers, those waves. Prevents, you don't yeah. want yeah. puckers and waves. Yep, I've gotten backings that were um, L-shaped, believe it or not, <laughs> and I pulled it out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> or they don't realize that when the shop cuts it you know when especially if it's a wide back you mm -hmm. know it almost needs to be un unfolded to be cut and measured because mm -hmm. sometimes they're cutting yes. it and the one side is maybe 80 inches wide and then down at the bottom it's 92 inches wide and then you just and then maybe it's not now big enough for the quilt yep mm -hmm. So. Yeah, think about it. Think about it like if you're um, if you're doing your quilt at home and um, you're you're laying your layers out to base them yourself. Think about that when you're laying them out on the table and if your your backing is not squared up right, it can start out at the top right where it's supposed to be. But then by the time you get to the bottom of the quilt, all of a sudden it's not lined up right. It's all crooked. Yeah. So that's it's same thing when they're loading it onto a long arm machine. So I have a question for our panel, and it does concern Ooh. backings. So do you okay. prefer the backing <laughs> is, you know, cut and torn so that you have the straight 
actually that's the cross grain that they cut it on because it still kind of messes messes with the the actual it just messes up that raw edge it really does but you get a better edge than if it were just to roll out and cut with the rotary cutter so what do you guys prefer have you ever had any issues with that i i definitely prefer it torn and if they give it to me not torn i tear an edge before i start to really make it straight yeah i do i always I, I'm get wide back. straight edge that way you, you get a much straighter edge if you tear the wide back and um, just put a snip in the salvage and just rip it and you'll get a nice edge I'm mm -hmm. giggling about this because we just had this conversation in the shop. And so I know my brother is cringing as he's hearing this because uh -oh. we were talking about this one quilting shop that I'd visited many years ago and all the fabric in the store. When you go to the cut table, they snip and they rip everything. And there was this uh, lady literally she was coming unglued because they were getting ready to shred her fabric. And Steve was pretty much like, why would they do that you know and so i was explaining that thing so to hear you say that if it doesn't come to you like that michelle that's right. very interesting so let me ask you this and now, now Ryan, only on wide backing i yeah. wouldn't tear okay. regular with a fabric gotcha. 40 inch wide you cut it rona you can yell at me because i'm going off script here because <laughs> i yelled at you all ago but when you do that michelle do you square up your quilts before you send them back so no one sees that you shredded that or do I you do. send it when when i when i'm done quilting i leave one inch and i cut off all the extra backing so if there's extra backing i'll I'll cut it with a rotary cutter with one inch around one inch top past the top so batting and backing will be there perfect perfect oh my gosh that was hilarious okay <laughs> so, <laughs> so next question um and I'm going to go for Jane on this. One hint or tip could you give that would help our quilt tops be a rock star on the frame for best results? Oh, here we are. So, okay. Um, I would say definitely square up your blocks as you are piecing your quilt is probably <laughs> my biggest thing because if you don't, and I know what, here's the thing. I was not a very good piecer and I'm still a very basic piecer, but being a long arm quilter has really made me a better piecer because I've seen what not to do. And mm -hmm. it's the people that don't square up their blocks and you have one block that has all this puffiness and fullness. And then the next block is not, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get that quilted without getting any pleats or, you know, tucks in it or whatever. So that would probably be my biggest thing. And the other biggest thing I would think is if you have a lot of seams is to run a stay stitch around the entire quilt top before you send it to your long armor, because that quilt gets hugged around and pulled and, you know, you want to make, I mean, not that we're terrible with them, but we want to make sure that you don't want to make sure that those seams don't pull apart. So that little stay stitch, like an eighth of an inch in all the way around, I love it when my customers do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jane is helping us be a rock star by telling us square up our blocks before they even get to the bigger <laughs> quilt yes. itself. She is also saying do that little eighth inch in or something stay stitch around the quilt. Um, Michelle, what is one of your helpful hints that could help us have our quilt top be a rock star on the long arm? I'll, I'll give you two. One to go with hers. If you don't just have blocks and you add a border, don't just add fabric, measure yeah. your fabric. Your yes. border should yep. be the same size as your quilt. I've seen people put in inches of extra fabric yep. in, in their border and it does not lay flat and it will just lump and limp and cause all lump kinds of problems. <laughs> it's just <laughs> terrible. Um, so so yep. square up your quilt too by making your borders the same size as your quilt. And then in the back of your quilt, especially if you have a light white back fabric and some black fabric next or dark fabric next to it, check for those threads because yes. that one black thread showing through your white makes it a mess. And, and if I don't catch it before I quilt it, it's in there forever. Yeah, absolutely. Nancy, do you have any helpful hints or tips um, to add on to what these ladies have stated that will make our quilt top a rock star on your frame? Um, yes, check all the seams. Make sure there's no holes. <laughs> I have one customer, it never fails. 
<laughs> there's at least three holes in her quilt. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes they're just like little holes. But one time I had it to where I could put four fingers in it. So just just double check, you know, because especially if you don't pin that border, you know, when you're before you attach it, because um, fabric has a mind of its own and it moves when you don't expect it, it moves. So yeah, pin and check all your seams, please. <laughs> I've done that. So what about um, pressing or starching the quilt top prior to seams open? Is any of that like make y'all happy? You don't care? Like I personally don't want a quilt to come to me that is loaded with fragrance from starches because um, it it just I get a headache immediately. So if you're going to starch, it's fine. You know, I'll live with it. I'll survive. But um, I think most people starch in the, the in the prep work before the quilt, not yeah. after. So mm -hmm. that's my thoughts. I mean, yeah, pressed is nice. I mean, you have. I have gotten quilts and backing that are kind of just balled up and thrown into a bag. And I would, you know, I really don't want to have to press everybody's quilt before I put it on the frame. It's extra time. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. extra time. And I'm probably going to yeah. charge you for it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have one customer and she's fabulous. She has the flattest seams ever. Everything's yeah. pressed open. They're always beautiful, perfect. And she makes the most flat quilts I've ever seen. Um, but I'm okay with them going to one side or the other, but I do yeah. want them pressed. Um, hers are exceptional, like beyond pressed, but regular pressed, just so all the seams are flat. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about batting earlier. And so I'm I'm actually looking at the notes this time, Lisa. <laughs> I figured out where we are. <laughs> so I think if I'm reading this correctly, uh, the the next one we're um, gonna ask about um, batting preferences, like are because the, there's all kinds of different battings on the market. So um, for the batting, if the we're gonna send to you the batting, is there uh, like thickness or uh, type polyester versus cotton versus wool. Is there anything that is easier to work with more than the other? I don't I'll know. My needle pierces through everything. So <laughs> <laughs> it just goes through. Yeah. So for I, a new quilter, if I'm wanting to get custom work, is there a particular batter batting that you would suggest to give me some poofy texture or oh so you want like a trapunto look i don't oh. know i'm a new quilter i oh. want you to tell me miss Longarm. <laughs> that could be a long discussion who wants to take that one <laughs> i know right i don't most of the times when i'm doing custom work and people want it to show or they want it to hang at a show um or even at the local guild show. I mean, I I always tell them to double bat. And I use a cotton or a cotton poly blend on the bottom and a wool on top. And the cotton or the poly, cotton poly blend on the back keeps everything nice and stable and secure so it can hang straight at the show. And then that wool gives the nice texture for the, the quilting to really shine. So I love that tip. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yes. I never would have even thought to use two different types of, of batting. Does it, so is that better on a long arm or like, say if I was doing a smaller, like wall hanging type piece on my machine, mm -hmm. would you still suggest the same? You could do that. Yep. I mean, you've been to the show and you've seen that quilt that sort of waves there. It, it doesn't lay flat, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most often it's because that the, it wasn't, that didn't have the right kind of batting in it. Yeah, you know, for it to hang straight. Yeah, so, yeah. A lot of times for wall hangings, I mean, I've done. Now there has been a time I did a really large wall hanging for somebody. It was like eighty by eighty, and they didn't want it double batted. So I just used a pretty thick, the one of the thicker of the um, a cotton batting that I could get, and that worked out well too. Hmm. What about thread, like? talk thread for a minute what's what's the standard is there a standard for what type of thread in a long arm 
there's a Edge lot to out there. versus custom. Once in a while, you get somebody who wants cotton thread and they insist yeah. that it has to be cotton. Um, but most of the time, I go by what color it mm -hmm. is going to be. So I pick a color that I like um, that will go nicely with the thread. Most of what I use is polyester or a poly covered. Um, but if somebody requests cotton, you use cotton. Um, and the machine will take anything. You just got to set the tension for it. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have so, a different color on top than bottom? Yep. You sure can. So I teach I, a lot and I teach on to both domestic and long arms, but I tell my students, and even when I do guild talks, is that 40 weight and below are thicker and they're going to show more and 50 weight up to 100 weight are thinner and finer. And so they are going to blend in more. And there is no right or wrong answer. It's about what you like. You know, right. you can have heavy custom quilting and if you used 40 weight thread, it would make the quilt really, really stiff. But if you used 100 weight thread, it would still be pretty soft and pliable. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of what you like. I tend to use 50 to 100 weight because I'm doing a lot of dense quilting in mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also thread that's got high sheen, which is mm -hmm. um, um, like a it, well, it's polyester, but it's you can use embroidery thread, you can use silk thread. Um, if you use silk, it comes on a spool. At least I haven't seen any that comes on a cone. Jane, do you have silk thread at all? I do. I do. And we hold, wait a minute. I, let's see. I just had some. While Jane is gone, everybody look at all those beautiful thread colors. <laughs> I know. Aren't they great? Yeah, there you go. And it's on a cone. It's on a little cone. It's on, yeah, on a little cone. It's more like a school size, right? Yeah. A little bit yeah. bigger, but yeah. 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 But I tend to use a lot of, um, it's a uh, micro quilter. It's by Superior Threads. It's a hundred weight. It's so fine. And it's just, it works really well for, you know, because most of the quilting I'm doing, people want it to blend in. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I was just going to say, it kind of depends on how you want your quilt to look. Do you want the quilting to really show, like be part of the showcase, or do you want it to kind of more blend into the quilt top? So I guess that's, that's definitely where the thread thickness would, would come in. Right. Yeah. And if someone is sending a quilt, like I said, you know, I, most of my questions, I'm coming at it as a newbie um that's you know maybe never sent something to a long arm or whatever but if they're doing a utility quilt or a child's quilt that they know is going to be washed a lot and a lot and a lot mm -hmm. what's the recommendations there michelle since you do the edge to edge typically you would i would recommend edge to edge yeah I was when you start you do doing on utility or kids when when, when I, I recommend edge to edge on on those because the more stops and starts you have the more knots you're tying mm -hmm. and they're not as strong you're going to have a weak spot every time you stop and start so it's better to have it go edge mm -hmm. to edge um so there aren't any knots in the middle that are gonna potentially come loose and a particular size thread that you would think would be more durable like you know would it be um, a 40 weight or probably 40 I, I wouldn't i you don't need a thicker thread so 40 even 40 to 50 i wouldn't go much right. off of those Jane, did you have something you wanted to piggyback on? Nope. That? No, I, I agree. Yeah, I, okay, I feel so, like, go ahead, Rona. Oh, no, I, I was going to I was looking at the notes again, and, and I think we're <laughs> to my, my thing that I tried to jump in <laughs> earlier <laughs> about, um, like, doing the, the consultation, and if I were going to send you, uh, or send a quilt, um, I think we already talked about like the the edge to edge versus custom, right? So let's do this. How about um, like let's say Jane, if I came to you, we'd never worked together before, but I have a quilt. Um, how would a consultation go? Like, what kinds of of questions would you need to know from me uh, in order to send you a quilt? Um. I'm going to ask you a lot of times I ask my customers to send me a picture ahead of time and I just kind of because that's how I, I like to doodle on the picture and get ideas, especially if I'm doing custom quilting. Um, but um, my first couple questions are to you are going to be, are there any designs that you don't like? Because I have like, I love to quilt feathers, but I've had people say I don't want, I don't like feathers. So 
Um, and then are there designs that you really would like to see on there somewhere? Um, I have been known to, to also tell somebody who I, that I don't think I'm the right long armor for them. Like somebody who wants very specific designs in different areas, um, I'm free motion. I'm I'm doing mostly free motion, and you know, I can't always guarantee I can hit that design exactly right on the spot of what you think oh, it's yeah. going to be. So, because people's interpretation can be different, so a lot of times I do try and send drawings, but most times with my customers, they just tell me to to do my thing, and they're good with it. So, um, but that's even stressful too because you just worry about when they get it back, are they going to love it? You know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's definitely so do uh like my long armor um that i use um usually uh like well when we first started working together i i got one of those gigantic rolls of uh, of batting and just sent it to her and just said peel it off and let as we go and let me know when it's done because i knew i was <laughs> sent her multiple quilts uh -huh. Um, but when a quilter comes to you and has a quilt, um, do you usually prefer that they send you the batting or uh, with their top or do you offer, um, like, do you have batting that they could purchase from you? How does that usually work? I have batting here and I usually stock. I like to, um, I don't really have a place to, to store rolls of batting, so I store individual packaging. I carry all different sizes and usually in cotton and wool and I can get anything else pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, but I, I keep a good amount of stock here. Michelle, do you uh, so, do the same? Oh. I'm sorry, Rona. No, go ahead. I do, I, I do the same. I, I actually I have a bathroom off of my room that we don't use and my bathtub is the storage for all my batting. <laughs> and it's filled with packages and boxes of uh, prepackaged batting. I keep, cotton wool and bamboo in stock. I have one customer who sends me quilts at, at least one a month and he likes double layer of bamboo in every one of them. So I keep bamboo right. just for him. What's and, a, um, <laughs> what's his love of bamboo? Um, this is obviously not, you know, quilter, I'm but. really not sure. And, and I, and every once in a while he'll say, no, just one bamboo in this one. And I always wonder why that one's going to have one bamboo instead of two. Um, but it's just, that's what he likes. So Nancy, and a quilt up beautifully. If it's a oh, one hanging quilt, it would only go. It would only have one layer of batting. Yeah, he makes all of his quilts are at least double or bigger. So, Ooh, okay, I know he's a busy guy. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> Nancy, do okay, you keep so batting there, or does some uh, one need to send you batting? I do keep batting, and I keep it on rolls. I have uh, three different sizes, and I store it on the other side of this wall. Um, but most of my clients, believe it or not, they they don't even ask and they go buy batting and they bring it to me. I'm like, all right, well, we'll just use what you brought, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I do keep it. Um, so the other thing that um, I've seen some long armors do and some long armors don't um, is do you offer any um, extras that somebody would obviously pay for? Like for instance, um, my long armor um, will do uh, the binding for you obviously I would pay her to do that, but, uh, but that's one of the extras. So Michelle, do you, is there others like that, that you offer as well, besides just the long army? I do, I do binding. So with the binding, you can either have me just attach it and you can hand stitch it, or I'll do the whole thing, make it attach it and, and hand stitch it to the back. Um, I do pretty, pretty much anything. I've had customers I had one who wanted an applique quilt with fusible applique, but she couldn't stitch around the shape. And so she asked if I would stitch around all the shapes first on my regular machine, blanket, she wanted blanket stitches around them. So I did blanket stitches around all her applique and then I quilted it. Um, oh, wow. Pretty much I can come up with a good price for, for any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> if I have time and it's a job that I don't think is insane, I will uh, consider it. <laughs> So. that's the moral of the story that's right yeah, i will do anything for the right price <laughs> right um and, and another one that i do for customers is i have an embroidery machine and i make custom quilt labels oh, so they can nice. hire cool. me to make them a label um just embroidered whatever words they want in a border or a picture rona yeah. you were asking earlier about basting service oh well someone i was so, somebody 
somebody in the comments had asked uh, about ba uh, basting, and um, I can pretty much answer that. Uh, if you're sending a quilt to uh, Long Armor, don't baste it. If you're sending all three layers, keep them separate because the Long Armor is going to put all of those layers onto the machine on separate rolls. And the, so they, if it's already basted together, they, they really can't, it, it, it's, well, Jack the okay. Ripper's Jean, coming out. If, yeah. <laughs> Jean, if somebody were to um, try and send you a, a basting, what's the, the problem with pre-basting a quilt before long arming? Yeah, I'm going to tell them that possible? either either they need to take it out or I'm going to take it out. So <laughs> it's or a not. Bait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would prefer it not to be baked. I mean, now I will baste a quilt for somebody that wants to like do hand quilting, or maybe somebody has a large quilt there, don't want to pin baste for their domestic machine. I can, they can send it to me in three layers and I can baste it together for them. And there is a lot of ladies that do hand quilting that mm -hmm. um, I've been hearing, they are taking advantage of the long armor in that sense to base that. And then when they get it back, they're hand quilting. And I was like, I never even thought about that. That's fabulous. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay, fabulous. So, um, what did we miss? Well, we, we talked a lot about the the tips that we can do to help you guys um, when we're sending you guys the the quilts. Um, what is a specialty? Oh, are there um, what kind of like specialty quilts? We talked about embellished embellishments earlier, but like, is there any difference? Um, like, say, if somebody was doing a t-shirt quilt or something like that with the specialty fabrics, um, is there anything extra that the the quilter can do when you know sending that or prepping it for you guys? Or do you even do those types of specialty quilts? <laughs> I just did one. Oh, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite thing. I, I was the one who pieced it, but um, oh. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah. Not my favorite thing to do. I did it for a favor, you know, for a friend. But when a customer brings me one, the first thing I ask them is, did you stabilize the t-shirts? Mm -hmm. You know, because whether, I know there's the whole discussion, stabilize or not stabilize. Um, I believe stabilize those t-shirts. Oh my goodness. Me too. And, and when you put it on the long arm, because I don't think, I don't know if people don't understand what our machine actually, you know, how it works, how it has to lay flat. It's the whole thing. You have to piece a t-shirt quilt, stabilize them, but you have to piece it just like you do a regular quilt. So it needs to be square. Everything needs to be measured. So um, just think of it that way, but please stabilize those t-shirts. Yeah. Please. Absolutely. Yeah, because that yeah, because that jersey knit, the shirts are made out of that knit that that stretches, and it's usually yeah. a four-way stretch. So if it's not stabilized, mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've made tons of t-shirt quilts. My husband was in a motorcycle club. I've I've done loads. So yeah, and I always 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 stabilize them. And you don't need need heavy stabilizer for it, but something that right. will help prevent that that four-way sti stretch. Because stretch. yeah, yeah, that's that can be a pain. <laughs> And Absolutely. then you have the memory quilts too, which are, mm. are kind of different and they can have um, sweaters and hoodies and yeah. blankets and nightgowns. Uh, I've got one over here and I just don't want to do it. I don't <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> and it's got a house robe in it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's like the old a house cloth. robe? What's that? Wow. Yeah. House, I mean, I've heard of like baby clothes. I worked with a lady on one that was a sweatshirt. She wanted to keep the whole front with the pocket, but I've never seen oh. a, a house robe. That one's new to me. I mean, yeah, it's teal. I can see it on the other side. It, it reminds me when I sit at the computer, oh, you got to do this. And I, I don't want to do this. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so we're coming close to the end of our hour, but um, I want to speak on something oh. that Nancy said a while ago that a lot of times if you have never seen a long arm machine in person um and maybe if you've seen one but you haven't seen it operating you really might not understand the importance of a lot of things these 
things these ladies have spoke about tonight. And um, Michelle and Jane are kind of sitting in front of theirs. I can see, I'm moving around my camera. I can see Michelle's a little bit better than I can Jane's, but you can see all of these big, there you go, Jane. You can see all <laughs> these big roll or poles, whatever word you want to call it, going um, across the machine. Each one of those have special purposes in regards to what Rona was saying earlier, one's gonna load the top, one's gonna load the back, and one's gonna load the batting. And then the three just kinda make a beautiful quilt at the end of the day. But these ladies um, have mentioned that they do have YouTube channels and that type of stuff. So I guarantee if you pop onto their uh, social media somewhere, you will see them operating their machines and you can get a better understanding um, for how that long arm really does work. Um, on Jane's, well, I can see it on both of y'all's, the, the, the big black square head, it's like robotic, that's their screen where, um, I'm assuming you guys are loading all the pretty designs, right? Yes. Yeah, when I'm using, yes, when I'm using the robotics, I am, yes, when I'm free motioning, no. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, so real quick, do we have... Do we have time for real quick for a uh, business question? Yeah, we have uh, some. So Melissa, she's in the comments and she um, is asking. She's a new. Uh, she's new to long arming, and she has a question about uh, basting it um, on the machine. Uh, says, um, have you seen videos where they're basting about every twelve inches across as well as down the sides? Um, so she's wondering how she, how would be the best way to um, baste the quilt on the long arm? Is she referring? She's actually is she new to long what? arming, Rona? Is that what you're saying? She's new to long arming. Yes. Okay. When when I load a quilt, I baste across the top of the quilt and then down the sides. That way, your foot doesn't get stuck underneath anything, and it keeps everything nice and square. I don't baste along that bottom belly bar. I just leave that open. And then as I progress the quilt, once I quilt within that throat space, when I get to the next section, then I baste those sides and I quilt within that section. And I continue that all the way down. And yeah. so you you baste it as you go. You don't just baste the whole thing and then start. You just baste yeah. as you go work down. Okay. Right. That and makes Jane sense. And I Jane do the or same Michelle thing. Or Nancy, somebody, somebody explain to those that don't know why is it important that you are basting as you go? Because some people might not understand the concept of why that's happening. Well, we two, made two big reasons. In. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Well, two main reasons I do it. One is to keep the quilt square. So if you baste it with, I, I use my channel locks and make sure that the sides are going to be straight and it doesn't get shifted. And I also based it so that the foot of the machine doesn't get caught on that and pull it up and fold it over and, and create a whole nother problem. Oh, and now, that's a big problem when that happens. Now, if I'm doing custom work, I will, and I'm maybe switching out thread color. So I'm going to do one pass in one color and maybe the, I'm gonna do the entire quilt that way. If there's any larger sections that are left unquilted before I progress, I will baste those down. So that all three layers roll at the same time, because I learned the hard way that if you don't do that, you're going to end up with puckers on the back somewhere along the line. Yep. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, real quick, uh, before I do forget it, um, mm -hmm. Jane, what is the largest size quilt? If someone wanted to use your service, what is the largest size quilt that you could put on your particular long arm? I've done a soup like a, a oversized king. Is that like a 120? Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Michelle? What's the largest that you'll do on yours? The the largest backing I can take is 120. So yeah. the quilt has to be about right. 112. Right. Wide. Yeah. Length could be longer, but 112 wide. Yeah. What about you, Nancy? Same thing. Yep. So, I have a 12 foot table, so that's probably what they have. Right. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. And the reason I ask that is because I have had people come in the store and their regular long armor 
you know, they've used for years and years and years, and then they come in, they got to find someone to do a king size because maybe that particular long armor, mm -hmm. you know, can only take a certain amount of size. And I just asked the question because I want people to realize as unique as your quilt is, that is as unique as the long armors are. You all mm -hmm. have different needs and wants and how you do things. And I tell people all the time, interview several long armors, you're checking personality, you're checking price, turnaround time, the whole, you know, the whole nine yards. It's gotta be a good fit. And I can't remember which one of you ladies brought it up, but it is about building a relationship. It's kind of like when you get a good hairdresser, That's you right. don't want to let her go. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when you get a good long armor, right, Rona? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you don't want to yep. let them go. Um, so real quick before we leave, um, I want to throw out everybody's um, information, contact information, in case there is someone out there wanting to start their long, biz, uh, long arming business. And I want to ask you guys how to questions they can get to you guys since y'all are the expert. If someone has a quilt they want to be long armed and they want to use you guys, they can get to you. But before we go to the 411 again, Rona, give us an update, Miss Traveler. What's going on in your <laughs> world and what can everyone expect um, from you in the past couple of weeks? What have you done and what's happening in the next uh, three or four weeks before our next battle? Okay, so uh, I just got back from Georgia. Uh, shout out to the the Hall County uh, Quilters Guild in uh, Flowery Branch, Georgia. They were awesome. Um, but also, okay, so I leave in what time is it? Uh, my flight leaves in exactly forty eight hours and twenty minutes for Ooh. Iceland for the to start the Iceland tour, and then uh, from there we'll be there ten days, and then I fly over to England to film, then work the Birmingham Festival or the Festival of quilts in Birmingham in uh, the UK. And then I'll be traveling around the UK for seven weeks filming for the YouTube show. So next month, as long as the internet access holds, <laughs> is going to be fantastic because I'll be live from Scotland. So, um, and then, uh, oh, and we just launched, um, we are doing the Iceland tour again next summer, but we're also doing another tour directly after for England. And that one's going to be just a quick one week. So if you only have like one week's vacation time or something like that, it'd be perfect. Hop on a plane, come with us to the festival, pal around Ooh. London. It'll be awesome. Um, and then I'm doing two quilt retreats next summer that I just launched this week. Um, so those are up on the website, one in North Carolina, one in Oklahoma. And yeah, I, I, I don't sleep. That's, that's what that is. I'm just tired listening. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Moral of the story, if you ever want to know what's going on with Rona, just ding it on her social media, her blogs, and um, you will find her. And Rona, how can they find you? What is your handle? Oh, of course, RonaTheRibbiter.com uh, is the, the blog and Rona the Ribbiter on all the social media for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of it. It's, yeah, I'm easy to find. <laughs> she oh, says and, she's easy to find. And the Missouri Quilt Museum website, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just just dinged there. Just dinged there. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, Jane, before we go, tell everybody how they can find you and take advantage of your services. Um, you can find me at stitch by stitch custom quilting.com or you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube under Jane Hoprich or Jane Stitch by Stitch. Spell that last name there, Jane. It's H-A-U-P-R-I-C-H. Absolutely. And I'm sure Steve's posting this stuff in comments. Okay. Michelle, how can someone find you to take advantage of your uh, videos or your services for long arming? Okay. The website is myquiltingbeehive.com, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. It's all My Quilting Beehive. And my Etsy store is also My Quilting Beehive. There you go, Miss Nancy. Awesome. Long arming patterns. I don't, I've done. Oh, show everybody the latest little on the cover thing while oh, we're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Our cover girl. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! All right. So let me see if I can hold it right. Where is it? Okay. Yep, My quilt <laughs> made the cover. So this is the latest magazine of Quilters World. It's called Classic Blocks Revisited. So I made the cover and um, the quilt is behind me, not like up there, but 
on my chair back here. It's very comfy, by the way. <laughs> so you can find me at nancymcnallyquilts.com and that's my same handle for all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a YouTube channel. I haven't put anything on there in a while. So I've been setting up a new video area in my, um, my sewing queendom as my husband calls it. So I go. love it. Um, also guys, you all know, I'm the shop owner of Sewing Dipitous here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We are also on Etsy and our webpage is sewingdipitous.com. If you would like a little sneak peek trunk show to about seven of Nancy's famous <laughs> quilts, um, I've got a little mini quilt show going on in the shop right now. Uh, it's been there for about two weeks. Uh, there is a video of me and Nancy discussing all of those quilts. Um, you can find it on both of our Facebook um that was probably about two weeks ago i think nancy is that about right two weeks sounds about right i can't remember when i when i left sorry <laughs> Some, somewhere she visited south carolina i think anyway, it was june i think it was there in june <laughs> it may have been but yeah. if you want to see those quilts in person and grab some of those uh patterns of nancy's you can get them in the shop i hear her husband is coming to steal those quilts next week <laughs> so you will want to pop in if you are in the rock hill area um, the only other thing for us is we're gearing up for all Carolina shop hop. It does start in September, but believe it or not, it's already July. We just got our all Carolina shop hop magazines in. Uh, we've only got a few left because we pretty much pre-sold them all out. Oh, wow. We do have our fabric. So that's what's happening in the shop. Uh, tons of serendipitous designs uh, that my brother Steve has created. Gift cards, um, notebooks tons of stuff he has been designing uh virtual y'all like puzzles i don't know if y'all have been on the website or facebook he does a puzzle um i think tuesday through saturday and they're all quilts related so those are really fun virtual uh puzzles so super fun guys thank you so much for being here tonight rona any last words i want to go to sleep <laughs> You no, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, thank you so much, you guys. This is I learned a lot actually, and I mean, I I've done uh, machine quilting. I've never done long arming, and I'm just in awe of what you guys do. And so I really appreciate all of you coming on tonight, and and it was really great information. And everybody should go check them out on Facebook and YouTube. And if they have newsletters, sign up for their newsletters, and you'll get lots of great information and and pretty pictures, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely thank guys thank you so much we will release our next episode topic in about a week uh rona may or may not uh be on with us depending <laughs> if she can get some i know wi-fi over in some Aww. foreign land but um we are always the third tuesday of every month and of course hopefully we will have a great panel that will join um us next month because i think the topic if rona's not on i'm in trouble so we better have uh -oh. some we better have some special plan. Nancy, we may have to have you back again just to baffle. Sure, with me. I'll do it. <laughs> I, Rona, you know the topic already, don't you? Yeah, we were going to talk about wool because, I mean, Scotland, oh. one of the things they're known for is their <laughs> sheep. And there's definitely lots of wool that comes out of wool yarn. And um, wool has become uh, pretty popular in quilting with the yeah, felted yeah. wool and all the beautiful art quilts and, and all that stuff. So yeah, I think it would be kind of a, an appropriate uh, topic for being in Scotland. <laughs> Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. We hope to see you next time on Quote Babble Live. Thank you, Nancy, Jane, Michelle. Thank you. Bye, everybody. To all of you. Thank you. All.